Shastra Gyan, or knowledge of the Vedas, does not help anyone understand the personality of Godhead. Only one who is favored or shown mercy by the Lord can understand Him. This is also explained in the Upanishad, Mundaka Upanishad 3.2.3. Naya Matma Pravachanena Labyo Na Medesa Na Bahuna Shutena Yame Vaisha Vishnite Tena Labyas Tashesha Atma Vivri Nute Tanum Swam Translation the Supreme Lord is not obtained by expert explanations, by vast intelligence, or even by much hearing. He is obtained only by one whom he himself chooses. To such a person, he manifests his own form. One description given of Brahman is Satyam Brahma, Ananda Rupam. Brahman is the absolute truth and complete ananda all bliss. The forms of Vishnu, the supreme Brahman, were one, but they were manifested differently. The followers of the Upanishads, however, cannot understand the varieties manifested by Brahman. This proves that Brahman and Paramatma can actually be understood only through devotion, as confirmed by the Lord Himself in Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhaktiya Aum Ekaya Grahya, Srimad Bhagavatam 11.14.21 To establish that Brahman indeed has transcendental form, Srila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur gives various quotations from the Shastra. In the Shvatashvatara Upanishad 3a, the Supreme is described as Aditya Vanam Tamasa Parashtat. Translation, he who self manifest form is luminous like the sun and transcendental to the darkness of ignorance. Ananda matram ajaram puranam ekam santam bahuda vishyamanam The Supreme is blissful with no tinge of unhappiness. Although he is the oldest, he never ages. And although one, he is experienced in different forms. Save Nitya Shashvatascha Dehastascha Paramatma Translation All the forms of the Supreme Person are eternal. That's from the Mahabharata Purana. The Supreme Person has a form with hands and legs and other personal features, but his hands and legs are not material. Bhaktas know that the form of Krishna or Brahman is not at all material. Rather, Brahman has a transcendental form. And when one is absorbed in it, being fully developed in bhakti, one can understand him. Brahmanjana Churita Bhakti Vilochanena. The Maya bodies, however, cannot understand this transcendental form, for they think that it is material. Transcendental forms of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his person are so great that the impersonal followers of the Upanishad cannot reach the platform of knowledge to understand them. Particularly, the transcendental forms of the Lord are beyond the reach of the impersonist, who can only understand through the studies of the Upanishad that the Absolute Truth is not matter, and that the Absolute Truth is not material, it, sorry, and that the Absolute Truth is not materially restricted by limited potency. Yet although Krishna cannot be seen through the Upanishads, in some places it is said that Krishna can in fact be known in this way. Opanishadam Purisham, he is known by the Upanishads. This means that when one is purified by Vedic knowledge, one is then allowed to enter into devotional understanding. Madhbhaktim Lavate Param. Now look. Kotach Pradadana Munayo Jnana Vairagya Yuktaya Pashyant Yatmani Chatmanam Bhaktya Shuta Grihitaya Translation The seriously inquisitive student or stage, well equipped with knowledge and detachment, realizes that the absolute truth by rendering devotional service in terms of what he has heard from the Vedanta Shruti. Srimad Bhagavatam 1 2 12. The word Shruta Grihitaya refers to Vedanta knowledge, not, not sentimentality. 
Shruta Grihita is sound knowledge. Lord Jagannath, Lord Baladev, Devi Subhadra Ki. Shri Shri Radha Londani Shvara Ki. Shri Giri Govadan Ki. Shri Gaur Shri Shri Gaurani Thaya Ki. Gaur Premanam Narayi Gaur. So that last point, let me just repeat that. The seriously inquisitive student or stage, when equipped with knowledge and detachment, realizes the absolute truth by rendering devotion and service in terms of what he has heard from the Vedanta Shrutis. Okay. Lord Vishnu, Brahma, thus realized, is a reservoir of all truth, knowledge and this. He is a combination of these three transcendental features, and he is the object of worship for the followers of the Upanishads. Brahma realized that all the different forms of cows, boys, and calves transformed into Vishnu forms were not transformed by mysticism of the type that a yogi or demigod can display by specific powers invested in them. The cows, calves, and boys transformed into Vishnu murtis or Vishnu forms were not displays of Vishnu maya or Vishnu energy, but were Vishnu himself. The respective qualifications of Vishnu and Vishnu Maya, Maya are just like those of fire and heat. In heat, there is a qualification of fire, namely warmth. And yet heat is not fire. The manifestations of the Vishnu forms of the boys, cows and calves were not like the heat, but rather like the fire. They were all actually Vishnu. Factually, the qualification of Vishnu is full truth, full knowledge and full bliss. Another example may be given with material objects, which may be reflected in many, many forms. For example, the sun is reflected in many water parts, but the reflections of the sun in many parts are not actually the sun. There is no actual heat and light from the sun in the pot, although it appears as the sun. But each and every one of the forms Krishna assumed was fully Vishnu. We should discuss Srimad Bhagavatam daily as much as possible and then everything will be clarified. For Bhagavatam is the essence of all Vedic literature. Nigama Kalpa, sorry, Nigama Kalpa Taro Galitam Palam. It was written by Vyasadeva Mahamuni Krite when he was self-realized. Thus the more we read Srimad Bhagavatam, the more its knowledge becomes clear. Each and every verse is transcendental. Alright, so... Can I ask somebody who can summarize in one line? Maybe we start with the brahmacharis who are meant to be studying the Vedic scriptures according to Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> uh, anyone, anyone from, from yes, Carlos. Kali Yeshita Yeshu Bhakti Jita Tvam. All right, do you, do you translate that for everybody? Down on the last where it is sung that. Oh Lord, you declare it boldly that you can only be understood by by bhakti, or that you can be conquered by bhakti. All right. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, Krishna is a uh, brown from varieties, and uh, followers of Upanishads cannot uh, understand him. So, but uh, uh, it is also probably also explained that we can uh, know him by studying of Upanishads, but only Krishna must. Yes, okay. And, and anyone else want to contribute? Yeah, that's correct, basically. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, as, as Carlos said, and, and this Mataji said as well, that um, uh, Krishna um, is desired by... The, the, what, sorry, what was that point? So you said that only by... By devotion can we conquer. Yeah, only, only by devotion can we, uh, to Krishna, can we uh, attract, attract him, only by that loving devotion to Krishna can be attractive. And also, this Mataji has quite rightly said that, that uh, Brahman is, is full of varieties. Do you understand? It's full of varieties. I mean, um, we use this example, don't we? When, when we come to devotional service, we're getting purified. It's like having a shower, isn't it? You know, we're washing away uh, impurities and so on. But, you know, if you think about it, is that you know, these um, people who, who are impersonalists who just want to understand or who just think that the absolute truth is impersonal are basically 
they still have to shower a bit more, don't they? They have to stay in the shower a bit longer, don't they? Because it's not complete understanding of the absolute truth. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's that type of analogy. Then they're not completely purified. Obviously, at that sort of level, you're sort of purified of the modes of material nature, isn't it? If you reach the Brahman platform, or the, or the platform of realizing that everything is spiritual, then um, you're free of the modes of material nature. So therefore, there's something else which is stopping that person from going any further. And obviously, that's to do with desire. It's the desire of the individual person. And um, Sri Prabhupada explained that the reason we left the spiritual world and we came to the material world was because of uh, misuse of independence. You understand? It's the misuse of independence. Um, because in the spiritual world, there's no modes of material nature. It's just free will. We just choose. We just make that decision. So, um, so this um, story of uh, Brahma stealing the, the boys and calves. Yes. Uh, is it like a tagline you want? It's like a like a synopsis online. One line synopsis. Yeah. All right. No, you come I, up with one. I just had one a second ago. But I think I'm just going to like. Uh, you know, it's about independence. Yes. It's like, uh, like wasted independence leads nowhere. But like, if you show mercy, then we'll, sh- uh, we'll show you what you want to be shown. Yeah, that's that, 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 that's a good idea. Probably.